Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Manny and you have stumbled across my channel. And if you're looking for the answer on how to cool the Ryzen 7 5800X3D, you found the right place. Now I'm on a budget, so I'm going to be going over some budget friendly options. Well, my one budget friendly option that worked for me. After trying many, many, like, uh, I don't know, I've tried, uh, you know, like four different ways with four different fucking coolers. And, um, I finally found one that worked, but it took a little bit of effort. Not much. So I'm going to give you the answers to that so you don't have to do the same shit I had to do and spend, I don't know, too much money and time and effort. So, first thing you're going to need is a Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240. And uh, I had to stick with that at first because before I got the cases down here now, which I just recently got, I was working with a micro ATX case and it really wouldn't fit anything other than a 240 AIO. Um, and I originally had the EVGA CLC 240, which that's what I tried right off the bat, and it didn't it didn't cool it sufficiently. Um, so anyway, the one I mentioned, the Arctic Liquid Freezer Two, it it helped out a lot right off the bat, but it still didn't do everything I needed. I had to do a little modification to it. So I got two of these, and these are the Arctic P12 Slim PWM PST fans. All right, and I got these off Amazon for ten dollars a piece, so an extra twenty bucks. I also got the cooler originally from Amazon. I mean, from eBay for twenty dollars. Oh fuck that! That is not what I got it for. Cut. Anyway, originally I got the cooler from eBay for fifty-five dollars off of Arctic Direct, which. It was their B stock, which is new stuff that they are trying to get rid of because it's been sitting in their warehouse forever. But the good thing with going with Arctic Direct, or I think that's what it's called. I'll put the links down in the thing so, it's on, so, so yeah, you can go check it out after. Anyway, it was $55, and uh, it comes with the six-year warranty, still valid, and they, they gave it the thumbs of approval before it leaves and gets to your door. So... I was pretty stoked about that too. Now what made all this come together as well was the thermal paste. And after trying Noctua NTH this stuff right here. After trying this stuff, which just fell on the floor. Um, and after trying, uh, what else did I try? Oh, it came with Arctic MX4 which was great and I would have probably stuck with that had it you know had I had a little more of it but they only gave enough for one time and throughout all my testing I had to try different positions and you know other kinky stuff to uh, to figure out the best option so uh, the little tube they gave me wasn't enough and um, this just didn't do the trick right here the NTH1 it, it just did it's good for it's good for other stuff but it's not good for this and um, so anyway this is the best stuff I could find budget friendly and and it literally cools just as good as a thermal grizzly cryonite and I know this because I did a test side by side with each other same setup got the same damn temps except the G-Lid G6 Extreme was a third of the cost. I like that. And if y'all know a little bit about Thermal Grizzly, that was like $20 for a gram. You know, the only thing I'm going to pay $20 for a gram for is some really good bud. And I don't smoke weed, so it just made me feel funny paying that much for a gram. And, you know, that's only enough for like one or two uses. Whereas this stuff, I originally got it a three and a half gram 
uh, syringe from Amazon for ten dollars, and I liked it so much that I went back and I got the ten gram syringe for twenty dollars. So do the math: the more you get, the more you save. I'm not trying to advertise for them, but I'm just super stoked about this stuff. I mean, it's awesome, and that was that was probably the best out of all the things that I tested that I saw the most uh, gains or you know I guess it would be the opposite of gains temperature gains no no it was temperature on gains it was uh, temperature drops <laughs> yeah I think that's the right word anyway so this stuff was key it really was um, the setup that I did originally was a push-pull setup where I put the slim fans on top had an intake design so it's it's drawing cool air from the outside in with the two slim fans on top pushing air into the radiator and on the bottom I had the fans that come with it which are the same as that except they're not slim so they're matching fans as well except those which those are slim and the ones that come on it aren't and um, anyway I, I the other ones are pulling there through the radiator so creating that push-pull setup you you can really cool down the water inside that radiator and uh, and that, that ultimately you know that, that, that ultimately is, is, is what uh, gives you the good temperatures you know no shit so anyway right my results well son of a bitch I totally forgot about a main thing actually rewind I also undervolted the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D using PBO2 tuner and I'm gonna put the links down in there I was a little skeptical about trying all this because I don't know shit about like undervolting and all that stuff. But this guy did a really good job of simplifying it all. And you can download the tuner itself. And he has step by step instructions on how to do it. And the gains I saw for. It's like. Man, it's amazing. So and originally. The chip uses 105 watts maximum uh, power. After I applied the uh, undervolting, I was running around 79 to 80 watts. So that saves 25 watts, and I was getting the maximum clocks that my particular chip could produce, which was 44, 49, basically 44, 50 basically 4450 megahertz basically 4450 and it did it consistently and once I got the temperatures to be able to come down during a Cinebench R23 run the entire time I maxed out with temperatures at 74 degrees enabling my clocks to stay at 4450 the entire run hey 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 there alright so I um gonna interject here. I'm gonna do a little TO and uh it's been a couple weeks since I actually started making the video and so some of the stuff uh I've had some time to test and everything, so everything's still great. This thing still cools like fucking awesome and um everything, but some of the numbers you know it's a, they are they're they're they change due to ambient temperatures and all sorts of stuff, but um so I don't want to be as specific as where I'd said 74 degrees in there. Um, that did happen, and uh, uh, the temperatures have gotten a little warmer here in general. So, you know, I've seen anywhere between 74, and that would be like whenever it's frigid cold in my room, and um, all the way up to where it gets around 78 degrees. Um, I'm mentioning this because... Uh, when you go to test it or whatever, uh, whenever you're doing your 
um, what am I trying to say, man? Whenever you're doing like Cinebench and shit, you'll you'll uh, you'll notice that like your clocks will drop around 78 degrees slightly, not not a whole lot, and um, certainly nothing that will affect like your gaming or anything like that. Anyway, um, during gaming, and I'm gonna put some some screenshots of some footage that I have from just a couple games, so you can see like what kind of gaming temperatures I'm getting and that's really what matters you know because it, that's well if you're using this for a gaming PC you know so um, anyway you'll see in there uh, in gaming it's usually hovering anywhere between mid 50s to mid 60s the whole time and that's after hours of, of playing and uh, and whatever and that's um, I've never seen it get really above 72 degrees and that's like I said that's like after my room is heated up from gaming and it been a couple hours and you know anyway yeah anyway I hope you enjoy the video um, please like if you could um, I'm really trying to give you all some accurate information and in a really good uh, option to help cool us down because I know a lot of you are buying these CPUs right now and you're gonna run into if you don't have an adequate cooler now uh, you're gonna be like how the hell do I cool this down anyway um, yeah and um, by the way also y you could probably uh, do this same similar thing to any 240 millimeter AIO as well um, I never tried to put the um, push pull setup on the EVGA CLC that I did, and I'm thinking now it probably would have, it probably, I'd probably get the same results I'm getting right now. So uh, even if you already have a 240 millimeter AIO, I'd recommend trying to get some the the two fans and then uh, trying that thermal paste uh, that I had already put there that I recommended in this video or try a similar thermal paste such as uh, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut or um, Cryonaut Extreme or something um, anyway those are a little bit more expensive like I had already mentioned but uh, anyway there's there's just uh, there's more options you know I'm just giving you my experience anyway I really hope you enjoy it and again please like and uh, subscribe if you'd like peace out I'm gonna have some 4090 videos coming up soon as I I got that a couple weeks ago and I'm I'm just having so much fun on it and I really don't feel like making any videos but I will bye bye which gave me the max score that I could get anyway I hope this helped you out try to keep it short short and sweet if you have any questions comments leave them down below in the, in the you know where you where you comment and if you could I'd like the video it'd be great you know, that would really help out. Thanks a lot, guys. And I hope you uh, have fun tuning your shit.